Hi, I'm Emily Merton, and this is In the Studio, produced by Davis Media Access. If you want to know more about Davis Media Access, you can go to dctv.davismedia.org, or you can go onto channel 15 on cable. Um, today, I'm joined by the Davis Blue Devil Hub, and we have two member, staff members. And why don't you introduce yourselves to start and tell me how you got involved in the Hub and your position at the Hub. All right, well, uh, I'm Riley Donahue, and I'm the web multimedia editor-in-chief. And I got started with the Hub uh, when some of the uh, past Hub students came to my English class as a freshman and uh, explained the whole program. And I actually saw one of the girls who presented at the gym later that night, and I talked to her about it. She really sold me on it. And so, so yeah. do you like going to classes, freshman classes? to do that as well because that was your experience? Do you ever do that? I, I have done it. I, it was actually really fun. Last year we got to like go to all the uh, junior high schools and recruit some people and uh, cool. it was great. All right. Uh, my name's Thomas Awide. I'm the newspaper editor-in-chief and my neighbor actually was a former copy editor uh, at the Hub I think for two years and um, he had been selling me on it since uh, probably like the seventh grade. And so when it came time to kind of select what classes or like the electives, I, I said, you know what, why not um, follow <laughs> Big Gary's advice and just kind of take the class. So, and, and it's really paid off. And Shout out. <laughs> uh, well, um, so you guys have been doing this since sophomore year. You guys took journalism sophomore year. Yeah. And so are you guys both seniors now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Do you guys know how long um, the print version of the Hub has been going on? Um, well, you can actually go to uh, the uh, DHS library and you can see like print like editions of the hub since like the early 20th century, like before like World War II. Like I think there's one wow. from like 1919 or like right around in that era. And uh, the website's been like... I think it's been about five years. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fairly recent. Um, we're still kind of working with it and tweaking things, you know, probably some people are tweaking it as we speak, as, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah, I mean, it, it can only get better. I mean, the hub's been in existence for 80 years, and, and you know, websites are just a really recent thing. But. Yeah, why don't we look at the website, because it looks very nice. There are lots of graphics on there, Thanks. and it's, <laughs> it's nice, yeah, it and is. you guys are really into social media too, right? You have Instagram. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, I guess that's my, my territory. Uh, the website has really kind of taken off since like it was started and like we get I mean now up to like thousands of views per day and I don't know we get we have in, like Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all kinds of different social media things. Yeah I think that really helps you know um, and how do you guys deal with controversial stories like when something happens it's kind of do you guys you guys both write right yeah. so mm -hmm. how do you what's the procedure for that when something happens? Um, well, I can speak from personal experience. Last year, there was the, um, the Julie Crawford and Nancy Peterson situation. And I kind of followed that from where it started and all the way to where it finished. And um, there isn't really a policy. It's just everyone's, when there's a story like that, you just kind of got to go out and do your job um, to the best of your ability, given off what people are going to say. Because, you know, in a situation like that, that's a personal issue, personnel issue. Um, administrations it's not in their place to say what happened or whatever so you know you just kind of kind of really critically think about you know what lines up where and just report the facts so that people know what's happening yeah um, so you do the stories and then you how do you do that in class when you start out in class do you talk to your teacher Miss Wilkerson and or do you guys just kind of report based on what you know and what you know you're allowed to do? Does she give you freedom? Yeah, I mean, she gives us a fair amount of freedom. I mean, as far as like rights for student journalists go, California has it pretty good. We have a lot of rights as students. We just can't like disrupt uh, the flow of school, I think. Or, uh, but we, we have written controversial stories that people have gotten angry about and have, you know, given us pushback, but we have like, I don't know, we always come up with them at the beginning of the month and Miss Wilkerson, you know, weighs in on what she thinks would be good and what we should be careful about. And I don't know, we have the uh, Student Press Law Center at our disposal, which you can like call up and ask like law questions that we couldn't ask, you know, a staff member of the school. So that's nice. But uh, 
yeah, we definitely do controversial stories sometimes. People yeah. get angry. So do you guys put a lot of time outside of school into this? Um, I think the website, they're constantly on deadline because um, media is all about deadlines. You know, you got to get the story up, especially with social media websites. You just got to get it up really quick. So websites doing their thing all the time. Um, print, we're actually putting out a paper next week, and uh, that usually takes uh, three to four days. We'll, we'll be in class um, probably a total of about like 15 hours in that one week that we're putting out the paper, just so um, designing everything, laying it out, um, getting the photos in, putting in the graphics, and designing it all so that it looks good and it's something that the Davis High community wants to read. Nice. So do you guys have your own personal favorite aspects of it, or do you stick to one thing? Do you guys take photos or make videos, or how does that go? Uh, I mean, I can't speak for the entirety of the hub, but myself and I'm sure Thomas, too, we really like to, you know, do some like, you know, do a little bit of everything and take some videos and write some stories and take some photos and, you know, maybe design something. And, you know, it's, it's I mean, for me personally, I really love the media aspect of it. And I love making videos and I love taking photos and putting it all together and making it like look good, which uh, is why I got involved with the website. Yeah. And I think uh, our advisor, uh, Kelly Wilkerson, she's done a really good job with the program and you know, you can really focus on one aspect, but uh, in journalism today, as a career field, um, you can't just be any more, or any more, you can't just be a good writer or a good photographer mm -hmm. or a good videographer anymore. You, you really have to be good at everything. So um, the way she structures the class is that, you know, you have to do a couple articles, take some photos, do some videos so that um, we're all kind of equipped with that skill set to not just, I mean, doing journalism, but there's a lot more to learn from uh, working on the paper than just these journalistic skills. Yeah. yeah. Do you do either of you think you'll pursue journalism in the future because of the hub? I mean, I would probably get into it for maybe a little bit less the writing, but yeah, journalism is such a broad, like Thomas said, it's such a broad field these days that you can be a journalist and not just sit down and write and not go to you know things to you know write on a pad of paper. You can go and you can take photos. You can go anywhere in the world where there's newsworthy things happening and take photos and that can be your whole job or you can go and you know uh, our advisor Wes Wilkerson her husband Vince uh, Vince Sterling works uh, for Dateline and he goes around and he films things and he went to we go to like Ghana recently for like the Nelson Mandela uh, yeah South Africa yeah South yeah. Africa and uh, you know he like does the like you know video and stuff and so I could see myself getting into something like that yeah, you got a head start. I mean, a lot of the electives at DHS, they're not really something like this where, you know, you have a lot of responsibility. A lot of people choose, like, something easy for you to take. But mm -hmm. this, you know, you, you're taking it all three years of high school, and I think that's really cool that you got involved. Is there, like, are there tight bonds between you and people in the hub? I hear a lot of people saying it's their favorite class. Um, yeah, I would say most people... Uh I have some pretty close friends in Hub, and um, you know the the class that came in uh, this this year's senior class. A lot of those people um, I've known since like first grade, yeah. so um, or you know junior high. I met Riley in junior high, so you know it, we've all been kind of together f since Davis is such a small community, and uh, you know it's a pretty big high school. But being able to take journalism and see people and reconnect with people, I think it's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. So do your stories generally focus on campus, or do you ever talk about um, stories like in Davis in general, or what people are doing in Davis? Yeah, we try. I mean, our main focus is to cover the, um, you know, the happenings in the Davis High School community, but that also applies to, you know, things that happening like outside the school campus and offside, you know, outside school grounds still greatly affect students at Davis High School, mm -hmm. and so we try and you know, cover things like, I don't, I don't know, what, what have we done recently that's been, right like, outside of school? Like, I'm sure that, I mean, we did, it's like... Well, right now, I mean, there's the, uh, yeah, the North Davis exactly. bomb threat. Um, we've, I think we've got a couple people covering that right now um, as we speak. Um, we've done some uh, people, there's a DHS teacher who's stuck in Boston running the, he was, well, it wasn't stuck in Boston, but he was nice. running the Boston Marathon when the bombings happened, so um, we got in touch with him. So when we do stories like that, it's really about uh, 
taking a broader angle of, about a broader news story and kind of localizing it to what's happening at DHS. So that's kind of the idea, because um, you know, if you look at it in terms of a website, if you're writing a story about um, the Boston Marathon and you write something about those bombings, I mean, people are probably going to turn to the, the New York Times or the Boston Globe before they turn to the Hub, which is the student-run newspaper at Davis High. So yeah, but we do a lot of different stuff, um, sports, I mean, whatever, mostly, but I would say it's mostly campus. News. Yeah, or something that ties into the campus somehow. Yeah. So do you ever refer to like Davis Enterprise or anything to see how you can take a more professional viewpoint or something or maybe get ideas or is there generally things to report? Um, well, uh, I'm kind of in like the middle because our teacher likes to compete with the Davis Enterprise <laughs> to get things up before they do. Yeah. And I also work for the Davis Enterprise so it's, it's kind of like a struggle but um, yeah, I mean, we try and we try and cover the same things they do, and uh, try and localize it more in the high school. I mean, in some aspects, we have an advantage. So, for example, um, when a coach steps down, uh, you know, the sports writers at the Davis Enterprise or like my my bosses, they don't necessarily have the access to the students like I do, or the players who are just at school, and I can um, walk by them in the hall, and say, "Hey, what do you think about this?" and grab a quote, and then throw it in an article that I'm writing. So. Yeah, do you guys talk to your friends a lot about it and ask them for quotes for interviews or ask them their I mean, perspective? Yes and no. I mean, we're trying to get people that are like relevant to the story. And so if we have people that, you know, say one of my friends is on, you know, the football team, and so I want to ask him like, how the game went, like I would ask him about it, but I wouldn't, you know, go ask my friend in the drama <laughs> department how, yeah. you know, how he thought the last baseball game went or like, you know, just like, it's 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 nice being able to interview people that you know and stuff, but like also like their involvement in whatever story it is is I mean yeah. important, you know. Davis is really tight knit, so a lot of the times you you've grown up with these people, mm -hmm. and so it's easy. How is your um, dynamic with your advisor? It's Miss Wilkerson, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys have been with her for a while, and what does she kind of take you under her wing in a way? <laughs> um. I think by the time we're seniors, we're, uh, she kind of lets us go and to do whatever, but um, she, as an advisor, I think her role is to, she, part of her role is to kind of oversee everything, um, but the other part is uh, to kind of push us to do some like big projects. Uh, I think I, Riley and I actually have a bigger project that will be coming on the way in the next couple months, and so she tries, she tries to generate that, those ideas and um, foster them as we kind of create um, either multimedia or an article um, about whatever that big story is, but um, I think sh her big role is really, you know, overseeing what's happening with the hub. But at the same time, um, I think it's a really it's a testament to her to how successful the program has been in the last couple of years, and yeah. she's she's really fostered, she's really built the program from the ground up, and that starts with journalism one, where she she's oversees that class and teaches that class, and. He's done a really great job of teaching us. I mean, we wouldn't if we didn't have her, we wouldn't be prepared for the project, the big project that we're going to put out. And uh, other kids too are doing big articles and big videos and whatnot too. That's really what separates us, I think, from a lot of newspapers around the country is that we have this like intro class, like journalism one, where she teaches like you know basics in writing, photography, videography, like radio pieces and stuff like that. And like in a lot of schools. You know, I mean, even at like like uh, Da Vinci. I know that their their newspaper. You just get right into the newspaper, and you know, and that like, I mean, it's definitely like there's a higher quality of things when you take a class first and like learn like the basics of everything, and you get this like education on what makes you know good jur journalism good, and so that really has really helped the program a lot, I think. Yeah, and because of things like that, the program has been recognized, right? Mm -hmm. How so? Um. We just went to, we actually in November, we all went out to uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, for a national convention and we spent some time. Um, it's, I think there are like, what, 6,000 kids or yeah, something about that? a lot of people there. Um, from around the country. I mean, I have, I have some friends who do journalism from around the country, so it's all nice to see them. But um, I think in the past couple of years, we received a pacemaker award for the newspaper and the website. So that's recognized as some of the, uh, one of the top 40 no, top 20 newspapers or websites in the country. And then um, I think we were also a pacemaker finalists, which means top 40, but not we didn't win a pacemaker. Um, and in DC, we were nominated for either a website or a newspaper. 
but um, you know, we got some awards, uh, myself and um, another uh, staff member, we wrote a story that won like fourth place for like news story of the year. So wow, it's just, story? Um, we wrote a story about uh, college summer programs and how they don't really impact uh, college admissions at all. So. Oh, that's so cool that you were, you're able to put this stuff on college applications too and job applications in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So social media really helps get attention, right? Like I know I like the hub on Facebook and why don't <laughs> yeah. we look at that? Um, <laughs> so I see a lot of the articles there right away. They're up, it seems like. And um, there are a lot of people involved in the hub, right? Yeah. Do you know how many class members there are? Our, been our biggest staff in, I oh. think, a pretty long time. I think Maybe we have... Even ever. <laughs> it's, it's pretty uh, big. I think it's almost 50. So we have a bunch of photographers, a bunch of graphic artists. Yeah. Uh, and then all our writers, too. I think we have about uh, 26 staff members, wow. So which split time between website and newspaper. Yeah, yeah, really, I think the social media has impacted it because you're everywhere. <laughs> and so people are taking journalism one and so you know you're gonna have that flow of students coming in even when yeah. you're gone and you guys probably like the page so you'll see it when you're in college and stuff too yeah <laughs> so that'll be nice yeah it's I mean we have a lot of even journalism one writers how many I think there's almost like a hundred kids between these two classes that yeah, are pretty, being pretty being close. groomed to uh, get into the hub next year if they choose to follow through with that but uh, I mean, yeah, the program has definitely grown a lot. I mean, since we've been there, especially, but just in general. In the last yeah, and you years. referenced, um, you know, when we like the page, we'll see it in college. Uh, we have a number of like old editors and stuff. They all like we actually just yes, yeah. just yesterday we had like last year's editor in chief come back and say hi. So, you know, it's um, we're like kind of like a family in which you know everyone comes back and everyone's happy to see each other when they come back from college. So it's it's really cool in that aspect. That's so nice. Um, so, you say that people are going to be competing, or maybe not competing, but like trying to pursue the hub next year from Journalism One. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? Do you have to apply to be part of the hub? You don't have to apply to be in the hub, but if you want an editor position, then you need to come in. Like every year we have the editors in chief uh, get together and as long as, or as well as Ms. Wilkerson and choose the next year's editors. And most of the editors in chief are seniors. I don't know if there's ever been any junior editor in chief. So. so it's like people that are going to be gone the next year, and they get together and they, you know, choose, you know, the upcoming seniors for positions. And then juniors also get, you know, the editor positions. Maybe not editor in chief, but um, yeah. So everyone, you know, chooses for and they like apply for higher positions. But anyone can be like a, like a reporter as long as you've taken journalism one. Yeah. Someone. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're a photographer, you can like come in and like take photos without the class. But so yeah. for the future of the hub, you see, what do you see after you're gone? Um, sad to think about. I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily sad to think about because I think <laughs> we're both pretty excited to you know pursue bigger things in journalism. But Definitely. at the same time, um, you know, I think we were in a similar similar situation when we were sophomores when. Uh, you know, because this is a pretty big senior class and we've all done a lot together. Now we're all, we're all going to be graduating. We're on our way out. And so um, I think our job for, you know, since we are all preparing to go to college, I think our job, our primary job for the next, you know, three, four months is to kind of prepare the juniors to, you know, step into those big leadership positions to take over because um, there's not going to be as many, there, there may or may not be as many writers as there were this year. So, yeah. you know, just have, make sure they're prepared and have the skill sets to, you know, continue the success and continue, um, you know, building the website, building the newspaper, so that you know people are can still consider, till still continue to read, and and consume what we put out. Yeah. So as for the print, do you think that'll continue with like media rising? Do you think they'll continue to publish that? Do you publish the same information? Um, no. Newspaper is more like uh, we'll write bigger stories for newspaper. Like website, we'll see. Well, you'll that's where you'll see the. 350 word article about what happened at the basketball game last mm -hmm. night or whatever but um, for print um, I don't see it going away anytime soon I mean um, I've heard some rumors that we may be changing to like a magazine format uh, I have a couple friends who are the editor-in-chiefs of like news magazines where they print on glossy paper and can make it look all pretty <laughs> but um, I don't think it'll I don't think it'll go away in the near future um, just because it's always been such a big part of campus life, I guess you could say. I mean, we've we've had it since the 1920s, and I don't 
see it really going away. Maybe when the enterprise goes away, because that's where we print our paper. But <laughs> I don't see I don't see that happening anytime soon either. All right. So, how much you you say before print day? Do you spend a lot of time at school? Because I've heard that you you spend a lot of time at school outside of the class. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, that's that's you. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so like a typical layout week on Sunday, we're there for probably like three hours, um, another six hours on Monday, um, another four hours on Tuesday, and then Wednesday we just have to stay until we finish it. So, wow. you know, I mean, Hub is, Hub is pretty like laid back for like the first couple weeks, but once we get to layout week, it's, we, we just have to get it done. And um, however much time that takes is however much time we need to put in. So do either of you participate, do you participate in the making of the newspaper, Riley, or is that just not? I write for the newspaper, and I, I don't, I, I've done a graphic for the newspaper, but I don't take any part in the actual piecing together uh, or, you know, designing. I mean, sometimes I'll talk to Thomas or the other editor-in-chief for the print, uh, Ash, or, uh, Zoe, and, uh, you know, sell them if I have any ideas or anything, but I don't actually like go to layout or, you know, spend time putting it all together. So it seems like you guys each have your own positions, but you end up doing a little bit of everything in a way because it's kind of a class thing, right? Yeah, everybody yeah. contributes. I mm -hmm. mean, just because you're a website editor doesn't mean you can't work for, you don't write articles for print just in the same way. Just because I work for print doesn't mean I do stuff for website. So. Yeah, that's the that's part of the whole point of being in high school and taking a journalism class is to kind of get your uh, feet in the water and do a little bit of everything. All right, so to wrap it up, kind of, do you want to talk about your favorite aspects or what the experience in general has been for being in the hub? Uh, yeah, I mean, my experience in the hub, I mean, if anyone is watching and wondering if they want to take it or if you're just interested, I mean, I'd... I, I, I love the idea of getting to monitor the power of people a little bit and have, have my voice be heard, you know, as someone who, who cares about a lot of things and someone who is interested in a lot of things. I like to, you know, educate people and, and also, like, hold people's feet to the fire about things. And also, I just really enjoy doing, like, art. And I love writing. I love making videos and taking photos. And that's just... It's just, just fun. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, Hub has just been, um, it's been a pretty awesome three years in terms of like a journalism journey. Like you tell me three years ago that I would be considering probably doing journalism as a career, I probably would have laughed at you. Yeah, um, same. <laughs> but, you know, three years and working with Miss Wilkerson and just kind of improving my skills, like it's just opened so many different opportunities for me in terms of, uh, you know, enterprise and doing all this other stuff outside of school and it's just really prepared me for what I want to do in uh, the real world I guess you could say. Yeah well that's great and I'm sure a lot of people watching are wanting to see something from the hub so we're gonna show a short video of the whole soccer incident right? Oh, do yeah. you guys want to <laughs> lead in with video. that? <laughs> yeah that was my video yeah. All right so why don't we see that? It's a little understands that the behavior was wrong, video? but he also um, wanted yeah, to put the I whole situation in context. I, I think it's like a natural reaction for an athlete. I mean, obviously we're young and we're still learning about how to react when a call in a big game isn't going your way. Um, but, uh, you know, we just got to learn from it and move on. I think we shouldn't have maybe reacted so angrily, but after years of hard work um, for your senior year to lose in a championship like that, it's kind of tough. For anyone. In the wake of the confrontation, the Blue Devils' actions after the game were featured by area media outlets such as the Sacramento Bee and KCRA3, who labeled their actions as boorish and hostile. Vegas says that the behavior the team exhibited is rare and knows that the incident won't define any member of this year's team. And I think uh, it's only those rare occasions where, you know, students and um, players at all different levels, you know, um, react that way. It's rare. And, um, but it does happen, and I think that uh, it doesn't really define who we are. Like Mr. Lawrenson said, uh, it's not something we do every day, day in and out. It's not something we want to do where we, um, you know, it's not something we preach about. We don't preach about yelling at the referee or um, taking it out on the ref or any official or um, anyone at a superior level because we do have respect for them. 
So did you produce that all by yourself or? Yeah, that was something I did kind of independently. I actually played JV soccer my sophomore year of high school. So um, I know a lot of those guys and uh, I was actually at that game when the whole incident happened. And um, it was funny because I was, take, I was just taking pictures and you know, when you're taking pictures, uh, you just kind of get into a zone where you don't really know what's kind of going around around you. You just kind of look for the good shots. I actually took some of those photos that you saw in there. And um, I didn't really realize the gravity of what had happened until like three days later when I just heard that all these guys had gotten suspended. So I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm close with a lot of these guys, so I should take advantage of that and, you know, talk to them about it. And I was fortunate enough that uh, DJ and Tim and Kyle Fix, they all gave me the, um, were willing to talk to me and talk about the incident. And I thought, you know, it went pretty well. Yeah, it was covered well. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys want to wrap it up by promoting the website at all, talking about social media? Yeah, actually, I'd love to. Uh, if you're interested in reading our stories, watching our videos, seeing you know the best of Davis High School uh, you know, website journalism, go to bluedevilhub.com, and that is uh, where we post all of our stories. And you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and uh, YouTube as well. All of our videos go there, and we post links to all of our stories on Facebook. So if you're interested in that, all right, well, any last words for the viewers? Shout out to Vince Sterla, uh, my man. <laughs> you inspire me. All right, well, thank you so much for coming in. Um, we really enjoyed having you and hearing about the hub. Um, this has been In the Studio with Davis Media Access, and tune in next week for more videos and more episodes.